In today's topic, we are going to discuss one of the important topic of the blood vessels and the cardiovascular pathology, which is the hypertension. What is the meaning of hypertension? Increase in the blood pressure means hypertension. Previously, the values were different, but the latest updates say something new. Previously, we used to say that the normal blood pressure is 120 by 80, which means the 120 is the systolic pressure and the 80 is the diastolic pressure. But at present, you need to remember that we need to say the normal BP values if the systolic blood pressure is less than 120 millimeters of mercury and if the diastolic blood pressure is less than 80 millimeters of mercury, it is considered to be the normal blood pressure. But what is the pre-hypertension stage? If the systolic pressure is between 120 to 139 millimeters of mercury and if the diastolic pressure is between 80 to 90 millimeters of mercury, it is called as pre-hypertensive stage. And we have stage 1 as well as stage 2 hypertension. Stage 1 hypertension means if the systolic blood pressure is between 140 to 159 millimeters of mercury and the diastolic blood pressure is 91 to 99 millimeters of mercury. It is called as stage 1 hypertension. And the stage 2 hypertension is anything if the systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 160 millimeters of mercury and uh, if the diastolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 100 millimeters of mercury, it is called as stage 2 hypertension. So, this is how we classify hypertension under normal blood pressure, pre-hypertension, stage 1 as well as stage 2 hypertension. So, we need to know now about the epidemiology of the hypertension over here. So, here epidemiology. epidemiology of hypertension. So, there is a primary hypertension. Formerly, we used to call it as essential hypertension, but now we are calling it as primary hypertension. So, remember that primary, primary hypertension accounts for approximately 85 percent of the cases of hypertension. So, primary hypertension is seen in approximately 85 percent of the cases of hypertension and 15 percent is the secondary hypertension. So, secondary hypertension is 15 percent. So, the most common hypertension is the primary hypertension. Previously, we used to call it as essential hypertension. And you need to remember that in United States, approximately, if you talk about US statistics in United States, approximately 25 to 30 percent of the adult population are hypertensive. So, 25 to 30 percent of the population are hypertensive. So, these statistics are very, very important for the exam. So, this is the epidemiology of hypertension. So, after the epidemiology, let me talk about the pathophysiology over here. So, here pathophysiology. In the pathophysiology, I will talk uh, separately about uh, the systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure as well as the primary as well as secondary hypertension. So, first now, what is the meaning of the systolic blood pressure? Systolic BP. What is the systolic blood pressure? Remember that the systolic blood pressure correlates with the stroke volume as well as the compliance of the aorta. For example, if you see, let me draw the left ventricle here. This is the left ventricle and from the left ventricle, we can see the aorta which is taking the blood out of the left ventricle. So, whenever the left ventricular contraction 
is rigorous which means whenever the force of contraction of the left ventricle is more so the force which is exerted by the ejection the force which is exerted by the myocardium is greater so the velocity of the blood as well as pressure inside the iota will be higher so during the systole that is during the ejection period of the cardiac cycle if the force of contraction exerted by the myocardium is more think that remember that the pressure in the iota will be greater or if the volume which is ejected from the left ventricle is greater think that again the pressure inside the iota will be greater so whatever may be the pressure which is seen in the iota during systole that is systolic bp systolic blood pressure depends upon two important factors here one is force of contraction exerted by the myocardium as well as end diastolic volume end diastolic volume because both are directly proportional to each other if the end diastolic volume is more if the volume inside the ventricle is approximately 130 ml that is the maximum end diastolic volume of the left ventricle if the end diastolic volume is more the stroke volume will be more if the end diastolic volume is more if the end diastolic volume is greater the force of contraction exerted by the myocardium will be greater so remember that the systolic blood pressure depends upon the force of contraction as well as end diastolic volume which means both are responsible for increase in the stroke volume so i can say that it correlates with the stroke volume it correlates with the stroke volume as well as compliance of aorta very very important point to be noted systolic blood pressure correlates with stroke volume as well as the compliance of the aorta stroke volume is directly proportional to the force of contraction as well as the end diastolic volume okay so let me talk in detail about what are the primary determinants of the stroke volume preload as well as afterload preload means the volume of the blood in the left ventricle is called as preload if the volume of the blood in the left ventricle is more automatically the stroke volume will be greater which means remember that preload is nothing but end diastolic volume if the preload is greater which means if the end diastolic volume is greater stroke volume will be greater systolic bp will be elevated so preload it favors or it antagonizes the systolic blood pressure it favors the systolic blood pressure which means preload favors systolic blood pressure preload favors systolic blood pressure but what about the afterload 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 we can also say that it is the uh, or the resistance the left ventricle contracts against the ejected blood which means for example there is some kind of resistance in the arterioles right arterioles are called as resistance vessels so the left ventricle has to pump to overcome this resistance which is exerted in the arterioles right if the resistance is greater then the left ventricle has to pump with much rigorous force to overcome the resistance which is created by the arterioles so afterload means it is the resistance the left ventricle contracts against the ejected blood from the heart so the usual resistance uh, actually seen in the peripheral vascular arterioles in the peripheral vessels so this is what is called as the afterload which means if the resistance is greater then remember that the systolic blood pressure will be affected according to the like decrease or increase in the resistance so here let me talk about what are the examples of afterload first one is the aortic stenosis there is a stenosis of the aortic valve over here so aortic stenosis is an afterload that is present at the level of the aortic valve right what is the afterload afterload means resistance 
So resistance has been offered at the level of the aortic valve only in aortic stenosis. So this is one of the best example. Aortic stenosis is one of the best example for the explanation of afterload. So what is happening here? If the afterload is more at the level of the aorta, remember that the stroke volume will be less, the systolic blood pressure will be reduced, right? Greater the degree of resistance at the level of the aortic valve, lesser the amount of the blood which is ejected into the aorta, lesser the stroke volume, lesser the systolic BP. And another best example I can say is vasoconstriction of peripheral vascular resistant vessels. So whenever there is a vasoconstriction of arterioles that is peripheral vascular resistant vessels, it creates a greater resistance. So whenever it creates greater resistance, automatically you need to remember that it affects the stroke volume as well as it affects the systolic blood pressure. And third one is the contractility of the heart. If the contractility of the heart is greater, think that stroke volume will be greater and systolic blood pressure will be greater. If it is less, stroke volume will be less and systolic blood pressure will be less. So this is how the preload as well as afterload has a major effect in the determination of the systolic BP. So other important point I need to talk over here is the elasticity of the vessels. That is the vessel elasticity that determines the compliance of the aorta or the ability of the aorta to expand when the like uh, blood is ejected into the aorta from the left ventricle. If there is a normal elasticity in the aorta, whenever the blood is ejected from the left ventricle to the aorta, aorta expands, right? When aorta expands, the pressure will be normal. If there is a loss of elasticity in the aorta, aorta cannot expand if the blood is pumped from the left ventricle into the aorta. So then what happens? The greater amount of the blood is traveling through the narrow blood vessel because it is not expanding and pressure will be much greater. If the pressure is greater, systolic blood pressure will be elevated. So systolic blood pressure also depends upon the compliance of the aorta. That is elasticity of the aorta. If the elasticity is normal, systolic blood pressure will be normal. If there is decrease in elasticity, there will be greater of pressure in the aorta. So greater the pressure, remember that greater the systolic blood pressure. In what conditions the compliance of the aorta will be decreased? Especially in the older ages, there will be decrease in the compliance. So decrease in the compliance is the mechanism for the development of systolic hypertension. Approximately, you can see in an individual with the age greater than 60 years of age. So, this is about the compliance of aorta. So, whenever there is an increase in the systolic blood pressure, which is caused by an increase in the preload, increase in the preload means increase in the end diastolic volume. There will be, uh, you need to remember that end diastolic volume is directly proportional to force of contraction exerted by the myocardium according to the Frank Sterling's law. What is the Frank Sterling's law? The force of contraction exerted by the myocardium is directly proportional to the initial length of muscle fiber which depends upon the end diastolic volume. So increase in the systolic blood pressure is caused by an increase in the preload and increase in the contractility or maybe because of decrease in the compliance of the aorta. This is what we need to remember. Decreased compliance can be seen in older individuals. Approximately, if the patient is uh, aged above 60 years of age, that is the most common cause for the development of systolic hypertension, systolic blood pressure in those individuals. So decrease in the systolic blood pressure 
is caused by decrease in the preload which means decrease in the end diastolic volume may be because of decrease in the venous return or may be because of decrease in the contractility. If the force of contraction decreases, if the end diastolic volume decreases, stroke volume decreases. If the stroke volume decreases, the amount of the blood entering towards the iota decreases. So, automatically remember that the systolic blood pressure decreases. So, decrease in the contractility or increase in the afterload means increase in the resistance, there will be decrease in the systolic BP. So, that is the reason we can say that afterload is inversely proportional to the systolic BP, preload is directly proportional to the systolic BP, right? So, afterload is inversely proportional to the systolic BP. Preload favors systolic BP, afterload does not favor systolic BP because increase in the afterload, there will be decrease in the systolic blood pressure. So, this is what is about the systolic blood pressure.